Mr. Chairman and dear brothers and sisters. You know, our brother, Pastor Eric Bock, has shown his humility as a true Christian. He was not out to push Jesus Christ down our throats as God. He didn't try to do that. In the Holy Quran, Christians, good Christians like these are being described. In chapter 5, verse 85, God Almighty, He says, that the nearest in faith to the believers will thou find those who say that we are Christians. The nearest to the Muslims in faith will thou find those who say that we are Christians. But among them, among these Christians, among them there are men devoted to learning. Men who have renounced the world and they are not arrogant. And such example we do find even in our midst today. I think we should give a brother a clap. This translation from which I read, this ayah, by Abdullah Yusuf Ali, these volumes are available to Muslims and non-Muslims. Each and every one of us, we owe it to ourselves. Muslim, we must know our own faith and what can be better than the Book of Authority, the Quran. The non-Muslim, whether you want to know about Islam or you want to fight the Muslims, there is no better weapon than the Quran. If you want to fight the Muslims, here is the book. If you want to understand him better and tolerate him, this is the book. So from either point, you, we, everybody owes it to himself or herself to have access to this book of God. At the ayah I quoted, the verse I quoted, this man here, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, he comments. He says, the meaning is not that they merely call themselves Christians. There are over 1,200 million such people who fill up census forms, ticking off as Christian, Christian, Christian. This is no, not that. The meaning is not that they merely call themselves Christians, but they are such sincere Christians that they appreciate Muslim virtues. When you explain to them that we Muslims, we are taught, don't touch alcohol, don't gamble, don't be promiscuous. Discipline yourself, fast, pray. All this, when the good Christians he hears this, he says, no, you are good people. They admit that you people are good people. Your religion is good. If only you had Jesus Christ, all of you would be angels walking this earth. The only thing lacking is that you haven't got Christ. That's all. But otherwise, they do recognize Muslim qualities, brotherhood, piety, charity, sobriety. We are not angels. We also have a lot of black sheep in our midst, like any other religious group. But as a people, as a whole, in my country, I'm boasting, and nobody ever contradicts me, the Muslims of South Africa. We say that we have the lowest alcoholic consumption in the country. We have the lowest gambling rate in the country. We have the lowest suicide rate in the country. We have the lowest prison rate in the country. And we have the highest charity rate in the country. And nobody can contradict us. They do appreciate that you people are good people. This is what it says. That you are, they are sincere Christians, that they appreciate Muslim virtues. As did the Abyssinians, whom Muslim refugees went during the persecution in Mecca. They would say, these Christians, they would say, it is true we are Christians, but we understand your point of view. That's all. We want them to say, we understand your point of view. And we know you are good men. So the translation, the translation, the commentator says, they are Muslims at heart. They are Mus whatever the label may be, is a label that's carrying, that's separating us 
from dividing the Hindus, but now they are Muslims as heart, and there are such good Christians living today. As Allah says, Min humul mu'minuna, among them there are mu'mins, good people, wa akthar humul fasif. But the majority of them, we know, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, they come and knock at our doors, they want to make mess on our heads, they want to use us as a punching bag. Yeah, there are people like that, but there are among the Jews and the Christians, Allah says, Min humul mu'minuna, there are good people, wa akthar humul fasif. With regards to the debate, with regards to the debate, Pastor, you know, made a statement that made my heart to flicker a bit. He used a quotation from the Bible where he says, I and my father are one. Correct? He quoted, I and my father are one. And I said, here goes again. Because I have been asking Christians. When I say there is not a single statement, unequivocal statement, clear-cut statement in the Bible where Jesus says, I'm God, where he says, worship. Or where he says, me and God Almighty are one and the same thing. So some Christian reminds himself, he remembers, his mind is tickled. He says, no, 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 he did say, what? He said, I and my father are one. Means I and God Almighty are one and the same thing. So I thought, nah. Here goes. But generally, my experience, whenever you ask the person, anytime any Christian tells you, I am my father, I want, means he is God. Ask that person, what is the context? And believe me, in 40 years, I didn't come across a single learned Christian, DD or bishop or what, who could give me the context. In what sense did he say that? So, what you have to do, anytime anybody throws anything at you, what you do is go and look it up. My booklets are available. Christ in Islam. What the Bible says about Muhammad. Muhammad, the natural successor to Christ. Muhammad, the greatest. Is the Bible God's word? Crucifixion or crucifixion. All these are there to arm you to carry out the discussion that you may promote this time. Don't be waiting, sitting, target, sitting, duck, wherever you go into the world, waiting for the people to come along and use you as a punching bag. You, you want to come and mess, make a mess in your head. Don't allow that to happen. Arm yourself that you can reason with the people. Call them home for a cup of tea. And the Pakistanis, especially, I don't know about the Arabs, you know, what nice, nice things they have you know, that you can give the tea, I don't know. But the Pakistani, I know they have the bhajiyas and the samosas. You know, and I tell you, that bhajiyas and samosas can enslave anybody. <laughs> Call them home, your neighbors, their families, says, come home, you know, we have our, our birthday for our child, or some big occasion, any excuse, get them home, give them the tea and the bhajiyas and the samosas, your curry and rice, and you see what it does to the babies. You know, the Vikings, whatever they were at one time, but our curry and rice and our bhajas and samosas, you know, you can, you can conquer them, Allah. You can conquer them. <laughs> Call them home after a cup of tea and a little light chat. He says, do you know we believe in Jesus? Yes, yes. Because they don't know. Wallah, you see, 